What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at SoundHound AI stock, ticker symbol S-O-U-N, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Friday, April 5th. Alright guys, quite the move today out of SoundHound, finishing the day up 22 cents a share, plus 4.36%, getting as high intraday as something like 14.5%, of course, in the second half, or really the, the last third of today. Kind of falling victim to that that market wide volatility to the downside. Some jitters about tomorrow's job report, some Fed comments. But let's take a look at Soundhound here today and pull out as much bias as we possibly can out of the movement looking ahead to tomorrow. Now let's get started here by analyzing the volume profile to pull out a little bit of bias here that the market is giving us on the five minute chart. Listen, first of all, guys, today is the first day of the newly implemented upload schedule for every single weekday. Um, SoundHound is today's wildcard stock winner that you guys voted on in the comment sections across the board on, on all of the recent videos. So make sure to vote down below in the comment section for uh, tomorrow, Friday's wildcard stock. Each day, the wildcard stock video drops at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time sharp so be on the lookout for that please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already let's take a look all right now the moves that i'm primarily interested in to try to pull some bias out of the the volume profile here is that of course the front side of this move heading into this peak as well intraday and then that big macro um you know a lot of stocks fell victim today to that that the jitters heading into uh really the last third the entirety of the last third of today's trading day Let's take a look here from left to right and take a look. You can see, guys, we, I mean, listen, this is very out of context. We typically expect on SoundHound, it's not usually that big U shape, at least not as clean. The volume on SoundHound compared to like NVIDIA, for example, is a little bit more all over the place, but this is very out of context, which leads me to believe that there's some bias here. Now, if we look here, we of course have some red bars mixed in, but this move is overwhelmingly to the green side with a lot more volume than what is typically expected. So, listen, there's some bullish bias um, once we peel back a layer of the onion to match the price action on the front side of that move here. Now, if we take a look at this move into the intraday high, you see this kind of pop, intraday high, consolidate, and then drop, it's, it's very mixed. Okay, we had some higher buying volume and some higher selling volume. To me, that's a wash. There's really no clear definitive bias. And then here, we expect a little bit of higher volume into the close. The, undoubtedly, guys, there's a, a small amount of bearish um, bias here. But what we have to consider is that, contextually speaking, most of the time we're going to see higher volume into that close and the right side of that U than we are kind of mid-morning where we saw that bullish volume. So while there's bullish um, bias over here and bearish bias into the close, I would argue that contextually speaking, the bearish bias is smaller since we would expect this already to have higher volume than over here mid-morning and it doesn't. Okay, so I'm considering that looking at the five minute now. Let's move on to the 30 minute chart and we can take a look at these trading levels, the self-fulfilling prophecy psychological areas that myself ton of other traders, and, and I think you guys should be paying attention to here tomorrow, Friday. Now, actually very good news here on the 30-minute chart if you are a bull. Two things. We reclaimed the 50 period, that white line. We pushed through it. We never really made a retest intraday, but we pushed above on higher volume. That's great to see. We actually pushed and made a test above the 200 period, however, fell victim to the macro volatility and fell beneath there. We tested the 50 period into the close and now in, in after hours, which I take with a grain of salt. After hours is very, very low volume, but we're holding it, okay? We haven't really seen a real intraday test of that 50 period yet. Two things, bulls. Any retest of that white line, I want to see a hard high volume bounce away from that level. Just hold it, similar to what we did here in the after hours, but on much higher volume and intraday. Ideally, bulls. The goal tomorrow is to reclaim the 200 period like we tried to do today, but upon the retest, hold it with a bounce, again, on as much volume as possible. Bears, any test of the 200 period, you want to see a rejection. Also, bears, the goal is to give up that 50 period to the downside and return to this descending pattern 
that we saw up until today, treating that area as resistance for, again, for as much time intraday as possible for, for both the break upside if you're a bull and the break downside if you're a bear. Now, let's move on here to the four hour chart and take a look. Man, this one's really coming together. It's very much so in play, so we have to take a look at this. Guys, if we look at yesterday, which was Wednesday, we gave up the 200 period on the four hour. Well, today, you know, we didn't, we didn't really hold it. We attempted to, but that macro volatility yanked us back down. We're testing it here in the after hours, but again, after hours, take it with a grain of salt. Two things tomorrow. Let's just, well, let's start with the bears, okay? Because bears, it's easy for you guys. You guys want to see a hard rejection off of the 200 period and hold it beneath because you guys just reclaimed that. You don't want to give it up already. All right, claim that 200 period as a resistance, which you really hadn't done so on a true retest yet. Bulls. Just get upside through the 200 period. You want to see confirmation, so a retest and bounce on above average volume, ideally. And we currently, in the after hours, find ourselves about 9% away from that 50 period here on the 4-hour chart. It is coming downside, so that gap is likely to just get smaller and smaller. But understand that that's, that's, it looks close, but that's still about 9% away. But that really is the ultimate goal here on the 4-hour. But step-by-step, step, a reclaim of the 200 period since we did just give it up. That's a great place to start if you're a bull, ideally getting that retest and confirmation, okay, rather than just a break and pull away. But, you know, both are all right, but I always like a confirmation. Now, let's talk about the big story here, and that's going to be the daily. All right, the daily paints the most clear image. It's the simplest to look at, right? And it has the most eyeballs. So we, if you're going to skip any chart, please don't skip the daily. The daily is, is the most important one, and it's really where everything comes together. So. That 50-day moving average is currently below 5 bucks a share. By the way, this is not going to show after hours movement. That's okay. It's just the daily, right? It's just going to show the closing price. As of the closing price, that 50 days, again, not only below that huge psychological level of 5 bucks a share, but it's also about over 11% to the downside away. So I'm not really looking at that as immediately in play, okay? But again, any test bulls, you're going to want to hold that. Bears, if you guys are able to reclaim that to the downside, that's a really big deal. Okay, but really the most important level in the very near term, I'm looking at a couple of things. A stock priced like this in the $5 range, every 50 cent increment is a big psychological level with the round numbers having even that much more weight put on them. Five bucks has held, you know, that region as a support level the last few days. Listen, bulls, don't give up five bucks a share. Okay, understand that that's the bear's ultimate goal here in the very short term, because if you guys give up five bucks a share, those bears are set up for an immediate retest of the 50-day moving average below 475. Okay, there's really nothing else in between. But bulls, if we're able to just hold five bucks a share or even 525, even better, that sets us up for a real test to reclaim 550 intraday and hold 550, which then sets you kind of up for a, a test of that, you know, small number of 575, really six bucks a share, which we know in recent times, six bucks has been a huge level on SoundHound. Now, the volatility expectation, this really helps us position ourselves a lot more effectively. If we take a look, we have an expiration tomorrow. The market expects SoundHound by close tomorrow, Friday, a move of plus or minus 29 cents per share. So, the option traders expect SoundHound at the close tomorrow, Friday, to either be below five bucks a share, because this is based on the closing price, right? Just below five bucks a share, or as high as around 556. Okay, so the option traders expect this thing to either crack downside below five or reclaim 550 here tomorrow. Now, built in by design, that, listen, the expected move does not have a directional bias. But it's a missing piece that we need to look at. We do the analysis, the volume profile, the psychological levels, all the moving average stuff, right? To try to form that directional bias, we then look at the options expected move to get a volatility bias that helps us position ourselves with a much more well-rounded approach since volatility is a huge you know, factor, especially when trading options. It's very important. You can be correct directionally and still lose money if your volatility expectation was off. Of course, we know that. But there's one more thing we can do here. The options directional bias. Oh my goodness, I haven't looked at this yet today. 
103,000 total contracts traded, 84,000 calls, 19,000 puts. A ridiculous call side bias here on SoundHound. Today, the short-term speculators, listen, volume is very low. Take this with a grain of salt. But 9,500 calls, 1,600 puts. Very low volume. Take it with a grain of salt, but a heavy call side bias, not only out of the short-term speculators, but also on that overall ratio. Listen, guys, if your goal is to try to expedite this process of going, whether it's just part-time or even full-time as a trader, I, I encourage you to check out the Wrench Capital Gold server. I learned how to trade for free. My market tuition was high. <laughs> you know, I lost a lot trying to learn how to trade. It took me longer than it should have, but it's entirely possible to do for free. The internet's an amazing place. But again, hey, if you have, you know, a little bit extra to try to expedite that process, I think you'll find a lot of value in the server. That link in the pinned comment, that'll allow you to get grandfathered in at the current rate. The price does go up over time, but the rate that you join at is the, is the rate that you'll stay at for as long as you retain your membership. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.